This is already one of their busiest times of the year, and now this burn ban has significantly increased the workload for many firefighters in our area. Just within 15 minutes of us being here, the Mountain Home Fire crew responded to two different calls. A statewide burn ban now in effect for all 100 North Carolina counties. Local firefighters tasked with enforcing it. The ban on burning has probably given us about a 250% increase in call volume uh, over the last couple of days. One of the reasons behind the burn ban, says Chief Will Sheehan with Blue Ridge Fire and Rescue, the multiple wildfires burning right now across the state. And that's put a huge strain on the personnel available across the entire state. So if we do have a fire that gets any kind of substantial size, we're very, very limited on on wildlife or wildland type firefighters. Over at Mountain Home and Fire Rescue, their calls doubling, says Captain Aaron Martin. We're so dry right now that just a little spark can set off 200 acres. We're not trying to be the bad guys. Our main thing we're trying to get out is education at this point. The citations come from the North Carolina Forest Service and the Fire Marshal's Office, Martin says, and they add up quickly. The $100 fine comes with $183 in court fees, plus violators are liable for damages and the time and resources spent extinguishing the fire. Illegal burn. An illegal burn call coming in while our camera was rolling. Firefighters quick to respond and shut it down. Hi, I'm with News 13. Were you not aware there was a burn ban in effect? No. The homeowner, burning leaves, declined to speak with us. He got off with a verbal warning, says firefighter Morgan Schellenberger. Yeah. You can definitely tell the difference when you're talking to people. Like, they either knew about it and they just didn't care or they just, like, had no ideas. But ignorance has a limit, says Lieutenant Chase Massey. As time goes on, there's less of an excuse to not hear about it. Firefighters are expecting calls to increase into the weekend. And just so you're aware, right now I'm told the only open fire you are allowed to have is a grill with a cover. No word yet on when the burn ban will be lifted. New tonight, several hundred people taking advantage of a free COVID-19 vaccination clinic today in Nashville. News 13's Hannah McKenzie was there. The clinic at T.C. Robertson High School, just one of three free COVID-19 vaccination clinics in our area Saturday. Since July, the FEMA Mobile Vaccination Unit has held 221 clinics, more than 40% of which have been held right here in Buncombe County. The COVID-19 vaccine clinic offered free of charge, no appointment necessary to anyone five and older. First, second and booster doses readily on hand. T.C. Robertson High School senior Joseph Weinmeister feeling almost at home getting his booster in the middle of the cafeteria. It was good. It's, it's not the worst shot I've ever got. His reasoning for rolling up twofold. Just making sure I stay safe and um, also my grandparents and my family that I'm going to be seeing over the holiday. I'm making sure that they're going to be all right. The FEMA Mobile Vaccination Unit, or MVU, a collaborative effort involving North Carolina Health and Human Services, North Carolina Emergency Management, MAHEC, and Buncombe County Health and Human Services. We're kind of all over the place. We have three sites going today. This is just one of them. 236 doses administered here Saturday, according to FEMA MVU data. 97 of those vaccines going to children. This is the first shot for the boys? This is our second. Oh, okay, already. So you guys were on the ball then. Yes. Some kiddos more than willing to participate. Are you worried at all? Are you nervous? For the shot? Um, no, not really. Nine-year-old Eli Burton clear in his priorities. I'm going to see my new baby cousin in Ohio. My uncle will not let me touch her if I'm not if I don't have both of my shots. So basically, I wanted to get it just for that reason. Others taking a little coaxing. You got it. And maybe a bribe or two. He's going to get a toy or candy. Since the FEMA MVU began back in July, they've administered 8,601 vaccines. That's including Saturday's numbers. For more information about upcoming clinics, head to our website, WLOS.com.
Just today, city workers posted signs inside Pritchard Park that clearly state the park rules. They include a ban on weapons, violence, and drugs. A homeless man told me the signs will do nothing. Merchants are asking city leaders to assign two rangers as the police staffing crisis continues. This was Pritchard Park last night. For five hours, we watched the evening unfold with the homeless gathering and clearly many struggling. Mary Lou Sanders has owned the store Spiritex 23 years. Drug dealing, she says, is getting worse. But I've watched the, you know, the evolution, the, de the degrading evolution, I should put, of what's happening over there. And I really do not think it's a homeless problem. I really think it's a drug and mental health problem. 45-year-old Randy South is homeless, sleeping just a few hundred feet down from the park. The Chicago native says he's witnessed fights break out in the park and more. They have mental illnesses, they're handicapped, they're on dope. They're chasing drugs, it's everything. It's just a, just a giant conglomerate of all of us that are on the streets. It's unsafe. It's an open drug air market. Commercial building owner Marianne West says city leaders must do more. We are. So even last month we made arrest for meth possession. Captain Michael Lamb says APD is aware of escalating problems. A recent case charged as assault with a deadly weapon where a man struck suffered a bleeding head injury. Anywhere from serious assaults to public nuisance crimes, we are making arrests. But APD remains in a staffing crisis with just two officers down from the eight now able to be assigned in the downtown district. Asheville's chamber president meeting with APD's chief and the sheriff yesterday, along with city and county managers. The obvious concern that tourists are beginning to notice escalating issues that the owner of the store Dog and Pony Show shared with us. I feel it has impacted tourism because you hear people talk about that they don't think that we're a safe city. These small businesses are the heart of Asheville, and if we can't feel like we have anyone protecting us or on our side, then what are we supposed to do?